On our journey today, we are going to take a tour of a sample floor plan of the ground floor of the Dakota apartment building, as it may have been in 1979, when musician John Lennon lived there. So, slide on your backpack and grab your passport, and come along with me as we travel back in time. This video is sponsored by AudibleAdventures.com. It's pretty awesome, you already know the drill on that, so go and check it out straight away. AudibleAdventures.com Welcome along fellow time travelers, this is Scott Cardinal. Thanks for joining me on another photo analysis video. Today we are traveling back in time to New York City in the late 1970s. That is what this sample floor plan of the ground floor of the legendary Dakota apartment building is meant to depict. Considering the circumstances of what made the Dakota apartment building the most famous apartment building on Earth, I'd like to say something. For the benefit of the privacy and security of all Dakota residents, kindly do not expect this floor plan to be 100% accurate. Walls and doors move, spaces are divided, and sometimes they're even enlarged. Rooms are repurposed and all that jazz. But looking at this will give you a pretty good idea of the layout of the ground floor of the Dakota apartment building. But listen to me very carefully. Please, do not ever attempt to enter the Dakota without going to the security office first and announcing yourself. Even if you do, try to walk in and go straight ahead. There is security everywhere, and you're going to be caught. The residents of the Dakota are entitled to their security and their privacy, so please respect that. Because of its association with John Lennon, most people don't have an appreciation of how innovative the design of the Dakota was when it was first built and how it is today. So let's get started on our photo analysis. On the far left is West 72nd Street. In the center is the entryway that was originally designed for pedestrians and horse-drawn carriages to be able to enter. There is a door on the left side, and its use has changed over the course of time. Originally, it was meant to be an office for the porter. Because I know that people are interested in this sort of thing, this is about where John Lennon was when he was shot in the back by that psychopath. So now that we got that out of the way, on the right side of the entry to the Dakota is another door. Today, this leads to the security office. It is here where visitors check in. You go in, you announce yourself. They call the resident and they make sure you are indeed supposed to be there. Since the Dakota does not have an intercom system for the apartments, security calls them with a telephone. In the early days, there was an immense number of electric bells and speaking tubes behind the counter. And these allowed the office manager to communicate with staff in every area of the building. In fact, in the first few decades, for example, the manager could press a bell that communicated with whoever was running the elevators. It was pretty cool. And when the Dakota was built, there were special private wires that were installed to communicate with the Dakota stables, as well as the telegraph and messenger offices, and a florist, and other places that Dakota residents would need. Behind the desk is a door that leads to the mail room. At the end of that is a bathroom with the original toilet and sink. Originally, the space that is now used for the mail room was a waiting room for ladies. That is because this area was the location of the Dakota's original restaurant. This was the large dining room. This is a smaller room, which was used during off hours when the rest of the space was not required, so it was sort of a cafe. And the small room along 8th Avenue was a private dining room to give more privacy to some of the Dakota residents. And in this space was built a staircase which allowed staff to be able to go up and down from the kitchen below. Returning to the entryway, this is where there is another set of very ornate security gates. Once you pass through them, you'll be amazed to see that you are within a beautiful courtyard. It has the same buff yellow brick that's used on the outside of the building. And it's big. The dimensions are 55 feet by 90 feet. There are many purposes for the courtyard, which really wasn't something seen in the United States when the Dakota was built. 
This was inspired by buildings in Paris. In addition to being a turnaround for the horse-drawn carriages, the courtyard also gave the apartments additional light, sunshine, and ventilation. Since 1884, Dakota residents have used the courtyard as a gathering place to interact and socialize with their neighbors. There were also placed two water fountains, which I will discuss in another photo analysis video. At this point, you are likely wondering how John Lennon got home. So here's what he did. He walked through the gates, he turned right, and he entered the quadrant on the southwest corner. He then walked up a set of stairs, opened up a heavy wooden door, there's actually double doors there, and he entered a private lobby. This lobby was only for the use of residents who lived in this section of the Dakota. This offered Dakota residents a lot more security and privacy than other buildings. Once inside, he could turn right and walk into the elevator. And originally, the elevators were hydraulic. And I'll talk about that in another photo analysis video. Or he could walk straight, turn left, and walk up the stairs until he reached the seventh floor. Chances are, he probably used the elevator. And I will tackle the lobbies and the seventh floor in another photo analysis video. As you likely know, John and Yoko had office space on the ground floor of the Dakota. And how they and visitors reached it was to pass through this door and enter this hallway. And this is where that was, and as of the date of this recording, still is. And you know that photo that shows John sitting at a desk and Yoko on a ladder in front of all those filing cabinets? That's right there. And you know that photo, it's actually a few of them, that show John Lennon and Yoko Ono sitting on a sofa and there's two sofas against the wall and Yoko has this really beautiful Egyptian style desk and there are mirrors on the walls. Okay, so that's located right there. Returning to the courtyard, you will notice that there is a set of service stairs and a service elevator. That's right there. These are used by staff and were originally designed to open out into the kitchens of the upper floor apartments. They also go down to the basement. To reach the apartments on the northeast side, you would walk up the stairs, pass through the doors, and enter the lobby. You then had the option to turn left or right. If you turn right, you will enter a hallway which leads to small apartments. I say small, but they really aren't. They were originally designed for bachelors. Actually, that's not entirely true. During the planning stage, the layouts were changed almost daily as future tenants let Edward C. Clark and Henry Janeway Hardenberg know of their individual wants and needs. In fact, Originally, the bottom two floors were to have the largest apartments because elevators were still new and a bit of a novelty and then not, and not entirely trusted. During the Great Depression, however, many of the large apartments were divided into smaller units. Once again, this floor plan is not meant to be 100% accurate. In fact, it is purposely not accurate for the benefit of security and privacy of Dakota residents. I just don't want to be that guy. I'm sure you could understand. But this still gives you an idea of how these spaces were utilized for the benefit of Dakota residents. Now, returning to the lobby, had you chosen door number two, you would have entered a large apartment that overlooked West 73rd Street. Returning to the courtyard, you can see that there is yet another door leading to a service staircase and elevator. Now to the right is what appears to be another entry and exit to the Dakota. In fact, it leads right out to West 73rd Street. It was originally envisioned by Clark and Hardenberg to be used by staff so that they would not be using the same entryway as the residents. But this sort of turned out to be either too inconvenient or too much of a security concern, so those gates were locked long ago. Continuing on, you will reach the northwest quadrant. Just like the others, you will walk up a set of stairs, open the door, and enter an attractive lobby with an elevator and a set of stairs. Once again, you will have your choice of two doors. 
To the right is a beautiful apartment that overlooks West 73rd Street. Interestingly, this apartment has a staircase leading down to the corridor that leads out towards the 73rd Street entry or exit that was closed up. So it's possible that a portion of this space may have originally been designed for the use of a porter. The other door leads to the largest apartment on the ground floor. It includes a spacious entryway and a hallway that essentially runs half a city block. On the east side is a large dining room and a kitchen that has been redesigned and repurposed over the course of time. And on the west side are the bed chambers, as well as chambers for a living room, library, billiard room, and everything else one would expect in their home. Though today the windows on the west side face out upon a driveway and another building, in the first half century of the Dakota's existence, those windows actually faced out upon a private park for the exclusive use of Dakota residents and the row houses across the street. Yeah, I know Central Park is across the street, across 8th Avenue, now known as Central Park West, but the Dakota still had its own park anyway, and I'll discuss why in another photo analysis video. Returning to the courtyard, once again there is a door leading to yet another service elevator and service staircase. Now continuing on, you're going to see something quite interesting. Check this out. There is a metal staircase leading to a door to access apartment number 17S. Realtors like to refer to this apartment as a masonette, but that's not what that is. The thing is that the space along the ground floor of the southwest side of the Dakota, well, it was divvied up a bit, and a separate apartment was created out of this area, which was originally a large kitchen and a dining area. On the west side of the building are two bedrooms that are part of this apartment. Okay, now check this out. This is pretty cool. You ever watch Saturday Night Live? Remember the days when it was funny? Okay, well, Gilda Radner used to live in this apartment. It was also the home of football coach John Madden. Now, neither of them live there today, especially Gilda Radner, since she's dead, but she was there the night John Lennon was shot, and she talked about that in at least one interview. And as you can see, there is also a large apartment on the southwest corner of the ground floor of the Dakota, with windows facing out upon West 73rd Street, and also along the west side of the building facing the alleyway that also, once upon a time, faced out upon Clark Park. And so this concludes this photo analysis of the layout of the ground floor level of the Dakota apartment building. I hope this gives you a good understanding of how this incredible building was designed and how residents reach their apartments. If you have any thoughts about this subject matter, please go ahead and put those in the comments below and share what's on your mind. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Oh, you could also go to Amazon or any other bookseller and order some of the books that I've written about the Dakota. And do me a favor, I keep asking you to do me favors, but why not? Uh, go ahead and download the Audible Adventures app on your iPhone or Android. I do look forward to you joining me again for another photo analysis video. So until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.